Hello, my Sock Universe. Let's finish out the Spanish La Liga season. Not the Iberian season, because we have one more round to play in Portugal, but we'll come to that at the very end of this video. I actually had the chance to watch both the Thursday and the Sunday last round. At least everything that was played kind of at the same time. Because on Sunday, uh, La Liga decided three games yeah, uh, don't matter much, although I contested a little bit and we'll uh, play out the other games later. So I wasn't all, so I didn't see every, every, everything. But I saw most of the important things uh, for the positions while they were switching around. And let's start with the Thursday round where I actually, we will only fo focus on a few games there. Uh, the one thing I have to say about bunch of red cards given in that round. I'm counting a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine red cards uh, on Thursday. Absolutely crazy. Um, and actually we'll start with the title fight and then see where this uh, takes us for the other games. Real Madrid playing at home to Villarreal needing only a win while at the same time Barcelona uh, needs a win to stay in there. You already see the results here. It did not uh, actually go with it. I'm wearing Real Madrid because they are the champions. This is my favorite Real Madrid jersey. Though if I would have the white one of the, the white ver version of this one, I'm not sure would be up there. But there's something about this one that I like a lot. So. Real Madrid, I think, playing very Real Madrid-like uh, as of late, you know, going forward, uh, you know, how, having possession control in game without being dazzling. I think that's the best way to, 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 to describe it. But there was something undeniable about them. They knew that they need to just get a get, get win to get over, over the line. 29th, Modric uh, gets the goal and sets Real Madrid well on the way. And if that wasn't already enough, I think at the same time, Osasuna, yeah, uh, at the fifth, in the fifth minute, uh, Osasuna took already a lead through Jose, which was maybe at first a little bit against the run of play, but Osasuna had chances in Barcelona uh, to score. Yes, Barcelona bossed the ball around more. Yes, uh, they had uh, more or better chances, but, uh, but Osasuna was well in that game. Um, and Barcelona's performance was actually declining as the game went on. Um, Messi then in the 62nd gets a free kick goal to make it 1-1 and Barcelona tries to go forward but doesn't cannot really get anything. On the Real Madrid side though, uh, I think there was a uh, there was a penalty given, uh, you know, yeah. It's all right if you give it. And then they want to do it fancy schmancy uh with Ramos stepping up and wanting to play to the side to Benzema uh, to net it in. Of course, it doesn't work because Bonzo Bonzo is sprinting in before Ramos has even taken the kick, so uh, it has to be re retaken. I understand that uh, Villarreal players were, were kind of uh, not happy that this needed to be re retaken when there was a clear foul, but yeah. Uh, since Ramos wanted to give Bonzo the goal, he doesn't st step up does, and, uh, and doesn't go for uh, his. Uh, 100th goal of all, you know, uh, he would have done a record, but uh, he actually wanted to give it to Bonzema, who makes it 2 0. Ibora, six minutes later, puts one back, but Real Madrid runs away 2 1 winners. And at the same time, uh, Osasuna goes down to 10 men and still manages to win that game in stoppage time. After the game, uh, Torres uh, getting goal after the game, Messi making comments, and I think they, 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 this was much the bigger story than, than the Real Madrid winning because everyone expected that. And yeah, they got the trophy, and everything. Um, they posted the winning jerseys the night before already that the players were wearing, so I thought this was in interesting. But Barcelona with a dreary bad performance on the night, Messi calling out basically everyone. I think. He less call out the coach than the establishment. Uh, I think he was going for uh, on top everything needs, needs, needs to change. The team is badly built. And yeah. 
big speculation during the week whether Setien will even play in the Champions League. That has been confirmed. He will uh, he will have his position to uh, coach Barcelona in the Champions League. I have to say, maybe Setien say, say was a little bit out of it uh, for coaching this team. But on the other side, I think he's the least to blame because he didn't get a preseason. He took on a squad that was already very badly put together. And if you kind of find a slot for Griezmann and Messi to go together, there's so much talent in this Barcelona squad. And it really feels to me that this was a championship that Barcelona threw away in many regards than rather won. I mean, Real Madrid was consistent, played well. But when I just look at the squads, I just think the Barcelona squad is way more talented than the Real, than the Real Madrid squads. So you have that feeling. Uh, it was undeniable to me that Real Madrid, whenever they played, Real Madrid was the better team. Don't get me wrong. I think uh, I said it already um, after the first classical Real Madrid looks better put together and I think Zidane is very happy to have that one but I have to say pure talent it should be Barcelona up there but all right uh, Atletico Madrid gets a 2-0 win at Getafe which was uh, I don't want to say it was unexpected but Getafe uh, needed the win but uh, Llorente and Tomas get the two 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 goals and then um, late uh, Getafe players uh, is sent off for us so Sevilla was a dreary nil nil again Rasa needed that result but didn't get it a big result for the relegation battle was when um, Leganes beat Athletic Bilbao away from home they needed that win and this was kind of a, su a surprising win um, was surely helped by a red card given to Athletic Bilbao for a foul and the goals came late in the 79th in the stoppage time to Guerrero and Asale. Um, the other really big game was Celta Vigo against Levante because Celta Vigo, uh, at least if they get a win, they would already be safe. I think even a point um, at, a, at, a, at the time, the point would have been up, but then Le Leganes won. So they needed to get the win, but they get uh, off to the worst of starts by being 2-0 down um, through Bardi in the 11th, then in the 14th minute a uh, goal uh, was already given, but it was uh, this for offside, then Bardi in the 28th makes it 2-0 for Levante, and you think, oh, where is Celta Vigo going? And full disclosure, I have quite some sympathy for Celta de Vigo. Uh, this is one of those teams that I actually like and I was really hope, ho hoping that they stay in. They actually had a fight in them. Santimina pulls, pulls back and Iago Aspas, uh, after the assist of, Sa of Santimina, he rounds the goalkeeper out from way out and can pull it, uh, I think, from outside the box into the empty net. It was kind of a weird goal. It's 2-2 and I'm thinking, yeah, game on. No. Mayoral makes it 3-2 for Levante. And then uh, Levante has a player sent off Miramon, uh, where I thought, okay, this is now the chance for uh, Celta to go. I did not see much of, of, of the game, um, but I heard that Celta is trying, and then they get the equalized. And you see 3-3, three, three, Nolito, and I'm, yes, this is what they needed. No, it is uh, disallowed for offside, and it was marginal. Uh, didn't look right, and then Nolita is even sent, sent off for uh, comp complaining that this goal was not given, he just lost it right there. And Celta Vigo 3 2, and that meant they would stay in the relegation uh, fight instead of being safe. And Mallorca, who also needed need, need a win, was largely the better team against Granada, however, they don't make uh, their goals. Granada is the one who uh, gets the goals. Um, Diaz um, in stoppage time equalizes the go-ahead goal by Cucho in the first half and then uh, late in uh, no, mid, 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 mid three seconds Fernandez makes it 2-1 for Granada. They just cannot get their chances and that's why Mallorca was relegating Granada actually staying in the fight for the Europa League spots. So with one game to go, the table, it was all decided on the top four. However, we had a big chunk. Villarreal are uh, safe at least in an Europa League spot. So that was already uh, a big one. They couldn't fall out, out, out of the top seven. Um, but you could see Real Sociedad moving ahead of Getafe. Valencia, Granada moving up, Bilbao falling down. So uh, you had the, the thought that maybe Valencia could get in there again, especially with the last round of fixtures. A lot of mix, uh, mix, mixing um, towards the bottom of the table with Celta Vigo suddenly falling way down. Uh, Real Valladolid was safe, Alaves was safe. Um, 
uh, with, with, with those results. And Leganes, only one point behind. They just needed to hope that uh, Celta does not get anything at uh, Espanyol, the last place team, and they had to get a result against Real Madrid, the crown, newly crowned champions. Well, we was an interesting day, to say the least, yesterday. Barcelona seemingly was angry, 5-0 over Alaves, didn't see anything about that, but a remarkable result. Villarreal 4-0, Valladolid against Betis 2-0 were, were the early results. But then, Europa League fight. The big one was in a way that Granada, who really needed to, to win, got another win over Bilbao. And Bilbao losing two kind of important games. If they would have won those ones, uh, they would be well in contention. But Granada rolling over Bilbao. Uh, even the nice green jersey didn't help. Soldado uh, gets the 1-0 and then the second half Puertas makes it 2-0, Fernandez 3-0 and then in stoppage time 4-0, uh, kind of to boost the goal, the goal difference, although it didn't help. At the same time, Atletico Madrid Real Sociedad, um, Real Sociedad actually didn't show up for a long time. It was a very timid performance. Atletico uh, Madrid should have led by more than the one goal that they got, uh, to be honest. They get the one uh, through Koke, uh, which was a little bit of a, you know, uh, it was a messy goal to say to say the least. But the goal they get, it is one nil at the half, and then you think, yeah, they also said the way things are standing, they just at least need a point, uh, especially if Getafe isn't or not not doing it. But uh, ever so slightly, they get back into the game. Um, and then they get the big breakthrough. I mean, they had a few chances, but they get the big breakthrough very late in the game through Herrera, who gets them, who secures the ball. Uh, the on goal was, of it was of course an on goal. Although Januszaj was in the hit, he came on short before he had his head there, but uh, it, you couldn't see it very well. But in the end, it was given as an on goal uh, to Herrera, and the Real Sociedad gets the one-one, which basically secured them to the Europa League because they had the. Better goal in for ends uh, than Granada. Granada would have needed one more goal to move ahead. So that was already good for Real Sociedad. And I have to say, it would have not felt right after this season for Real Sociedad to not be in European play. I think they were very well on probably even Champions League course, but the Europa League, they well deserved. And then the craziest game of them all, Levante against Getafe. Uh, Getafe needed to get something out of the game a win and they were very very much in there the big uh the big one the big one was of course war uh who first of all i think they uh disallowed three goals by angel uh all for offside and it took a long time to have the reviews then levante scores and you think oh, a little bit against the run of play and uh, I have to say, virtual I didn't see Levante playing in blue and white. Levante scores, but the goal is also disallowed for offside, and this took forever. It had a 10-minute um, stoppage time, which threw everything because you wanted to that all the uh, second half started at at the same time, which was uh, throwing everything a little bit in disarray. So that goal, because I think they didn't have a good line or a good angle where you could really see it was offside. And that, uh, it took a long, 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 long time. Um, the third goal that Angel scored, I think, was the most contentious one. Yes, the goalkeeper had the ball on there, but he spilled the ball. So I could have seen that this goal is given also. But it was not given. So VAR actually being on the negative side for Getafe, then on the positive. Jaime Mata. Gets a penalty and puts it on, on the post. Uh, and Angel, if he hits the ball nicer, it could have gone into the net. But I think at that point, Getafe was totally demoralized already. Um, and while I'm not the biggest Getafe fan, I really felt for them. Uh, it did not feel quite right, especially how uh, Real Sociedad was fumbling around. And uh, full disclosure again, I'm for I wanted Real Sociedad to be in there, and I really was happy that if Granada could could come in because that was a great story. They started well in the season, uh, then took a, a dive, but actually after the restart, Granada played well enough to deserve being in there. I mean, they went toe to toe with uh, the champions Real Madrid. 
Getafe tries everything. They needed to just get that one goal. Again, huge stoppage time because of all the things hap hap happening. And then Koke very late gets a very messy ping pong goal to make it 1-0 for Levante and destroy all the hopes for Getafe, who will not play in Europe next season. It's not less than win the Europa League. It's a steep way, though. Um, so that sells the Europa League. Uh, Spots, Granada and Sociedad being the winners, Getafe being out. Uh, Bilbao, of course, also no, 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 don't want to lose any uh, Sevilla against Valencia. Valencia, the horrible jerseys and horrible showing. Uh, in the relegation battle, it was also... It went my way, but I have to say I had to feel for Leganes. Celta Vigo basically did not show up. I saw one good chance by Aspas, but um, Espanyol had a good go had a goal uh, take taken away by VAR, and Celta Vigo barely hanging on for the nil nil draw. And then everything was what's ha ha happening at Leganes because Real Madrid actually took the lead there. And you know, at first Real Madrid showing that they are champions. Sergio Ramos after nice assist by Isco. Although the Isco, uh, the second goal that he assisted was even better, gets the goal and you know he was just left alone there and can head head in and yeah, I'm Roberto Ramos, I'm the greatest ever player ever, whatever. Uh, there's something, you know, he's a little bit ridiculous, but the other side, there's something I like about Sergio Ramos. A full disclosure there. However, Le Leganes then gets late in the second half a little bit better in the game and they get the uh, E equals to Gilles. So they have one goal away. No Isco with a really nice assist. I mean, they lose the ball. Leganes in the midfield. Isco plays the ball into Asensio, who can make it 2 1 for Real Madrid. And you think, yeah, if you're a Celta fan, that's going well. Ah, uh, no, everything but Asale gets the equalizer in the 78th and from that moment on Real Madrid was not playing fully any, anymore and uh, may I say I hated this mint green jersey this season they have such a beautiful navy away jersey and just because this is dark blue against light blue it's not used this is a jersey I really would love to have it's a gorgeous jersey uh, I actually I'm, ho I'm hoping to get it on a sale someday. it's an absolutely gorgeous jersey they I have not seen it, barely. I've barely seen it this season, and uh, that's a real shame. Anyway, it was not huge chances. It was more, mostly missed shots of, of badly taken shots, but there were clear chances for Leganes to get that win, uh, which would be huge for them. And I have to say, on the day, I think if I look at the overall, I think Celta maybe a little bit more deserved to be in La Liga, especially the, the brief period they had a few week, we, weeks ago where they were just destroying everything. And then they get destroyed by Mallorca, which completely set them off. I don't know what happened there. Um, but yeah, they don't get it and Celta stays in. Uh, also, soon in a very lively match, gets a 2-2 against Mallorca. I think they thought in late that had the winner, but was not to be. Final standings in Spain. The top four, we uh, we are, are in Atletico Madrid finishes ahead of Sevilla, uh, thanks to the better head-to-head, -head, I think. Granada just in the Europa League qual qualification. However, this is only this is only uh, confirmed if the cup final cannot be played uh, on time before the August fifth, and uh, both it will be played in Sevilla. Both Real Sociedad and Athletic Bilbao want to play in front of fans. The Spanish Federation wanted to give the seventh spot to Bilbao or, or already if uh, Sociedad should qualify and then UEFA say, no, no, it should be then, if you don't play the final, it should be the seventh spot. So Granada at the moment is in there, but you know, I think they have to wait for the August 5th de de deadline. Uh, and then, you know, a lot of flip-flopping uh, mid-table and in the end, Leganes, Mallorca, Espanyol go down. Let's go quickly to Portugal. Uh, same thing. We have the champion crowd. Uh, Benfica took care of Gim Gimarejo, though it was a lucky, lucky win. And then Porto, also with a little bit of luck, uh, winning 2-0 against Sporting. Um, securing the title for Porto. That's 2 0 came very late. Uh, Sporting, I think, had, had a goal taken uh, away by uh, by VAR early on, but then Porto hangs on. They win their title again. Similar as in Spain, Benfica was the more talented squad, but there's good stuff coming up from Porto and they get their title. There was also already a few games played now um, over the weekend. Uh, most of them will have implications, of course. Uh, no, 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 not really. Oh, 
a little bit for Europa League between Rio Ave and Fama and Famalicão who all get 2-2. Belenenses gets an important win. So let's look at the current table. As I said, Porto through champion. Benfica is in the champ Champions League. There's a little bit of a, for the last Europa League spot. Sporting in Praga already qualified for the next is Europa League. Famalicão and Rio Ave have still a little bit to play. We look at the last round. And down there's a lot of movement. Portimonense moved up and you say it's a three-way tie there. Um, and it will all go down to the wire. And if we look now at this last round, um, we have um, Lisbon Derby and this is the least important game of them all. Rio Ave needs to get a result at Boa Vista at the same time Family Cow needs to get at Maritimo. I think Family Cow probably has the better chance here. Portimonense looks rather safe because they play last place Avesh. And then uh, it's between Vittorio Setubal, uh, who needs to get at home to Belenenses and Morense against Tondela. 538 says Tondela is likely to go down. Well, that was my big Iber uh, Iberian roundup. We have La Liga finished. I will tag on Liga Liga Nosh somewhere at the end of uh, next week, probably. Let's see. Italy or the Premier League. Let's see how it will go. Give me let, let me know anything you want to say about the last day of play. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye.